guys, so today I want to talk to you about the Sony A7R II, which I've been hanging around for about, uh, I don't know, two plus years, I think. It's an amazing camera, but guess what? That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to show you something really cool. I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the Alpha 9. And I also have one other thing, which I can show you. It's the flash gun that goes with it. This is the new uh, F45RM. Uh, really excited about this one. But let's start with the unboxing of these two. And uh, I'm going to keep that one there. I'm going to start with the SNR. So, you know that this is the, the new uh, uh, flagship camera for the Sony range. And uh, it's, um, it's going to be um, the competition for the 5D, sorry, what am I saying, the Nikon uh, D5 and the uh, EOS 1DX Mark II. And the reviews so far out there are just amazing, 20 frames per second, uh, no uh, black screen, no backing out, so lots of interesting stuff. So I'm really excited to open this and play with this daily. Okay, so we open up the thing, mm, smell that, it's a new smell. News. Okay, so we have um, lots of um, little uh, booklets, instruction manuals, more like it. So we have the lens manual, and we have something in Arabic and Chinese and English, most importantly for us. Right, so I'm going to just take this stuff, put that away, and what do we have next? So we open it up, and we have lots of cables. Uh, that looks like a power cable for the uh, turn that away. Uh, power cable for the uh, charger. Another power cable for the charger. I think this is the Aussie pin. They're not in Australia. Uh, another one. I have no idea what that pin is. And uh, we have the normal square pin and the usual pin which we're using. Sri Lanka. Right. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Let's open this up. Right, um, Alpha 9 strap. I don't think I'm using that one. Um, ba -ba 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 we open a small packet and we have. What is that? What is that? What is that? So we have. Oh, this is the uh, tethering kit. So when you're doing studio work and you want to tether your laptop or computer to it, you just plug it with this thing and it makes sure that it doesn't get unplugged. Okay. We have a battery. Oh man, that's huge. That's really huge compared to the uh, ASNR. I'm going to mix that up from there. Okay. Let's compare those two batteries. Check out those two batteries. It's like little brother and big brother. Did it almost fit like that? Check that one out. Two batteries. Right, so I'm going to move this one again out of the way. We are there, and we have a charger. Uh, so the charger, which is going to fit this beautiful battery. Okay, interesting. It's called the BCQZ1. Goes click in there. So I'll just take it out and not plug it. I'm going to move my battery out of the way. It's out. Right, and what else we have? We have. Oh. So we have a dummy battery, I think. Is it? I don't know. What is this? What is this? It's a, oh, it's an AC adapter. My bad. It's the AC adapter, so you can plug in. So this has got a USB, and this has got the normal mains power. And uh, I'm assuming that we use an USB cable into the inside of the camera. So we we'll keep this to the side, so we we'll see what happens there. I'm gonna move that away. Get some more. Ah, there you go. Nice and neat. And now. So that's where the cable goes. So this cable goes in here, which obviously means this goes into the camera. So it looks like that small USB B type. Okay, so keep that there. Right, and move the box to the side. And what do we have here? It's got this little baby here. Okay, okay. Right. Wow, check that out. So that is the Alpha 9. So that's what it looks like. 
looks really cool. I wonder if this battery has juice in it. And we'll try plugging it in. So it's got the usual bells and whistles. Oh, it looks, feels so good in the hand though. It actually, it actually feels like a DSLR. So it feels nice. Still got my little finger running around there because I have slightly bigger fingers. Yeah, that looks good. Ooh. The, um, the button feels very different. And I love the fact that it's got these settings at the corner here. So we have to do that. So you press the button, you know that? Press the button, you move it to AFC or AFS and DMFF, the DMF, or manual focus. So all the focusing settings are there. I'm assuming it's on the inside. I haven't actually switched on the, uh, the, uh, the uh, camera yet. And it's also got like the um, single shutter mode, um, high speed, high speed M, and L. I have no idea what L is. And the bracket. So it's got everything basically on top of it. So it's got the usual C1, C2, I um, got C3. Oh, C3 is on this corner this time. C3 is in this corner. And we have C4, so I'm assuming there's a customizer. And here's the joystick, so I'm assuming you're going to have a lot of fun with this joystick here. Oh, overall, it feels really nice, so I'm going to just try and chuck in the out. Ooh, wow, check that out. Can you guys see this? Close up on the Look at that. A nice brand stack and shiny. Okay, so I'll move the battery in. So I'm assuming the battery goes that way, upside down, like always. Put it in, click, and close it up, shut it down, and let's open the, yeah, here we have a, a dual SD card slots, so slot 1, slot 2, and you can use a SDXC card version 2, and SDXC card normal here, so at the moment I only have a SDXC cards, not the 2, but I need to get myself a version 2, and the, uh, Oh cool, so it's the same uh, kind of uh, LCD that comes up. This is really cool when you have to get into those corners and shoot downwards. I love it. Uh, actually, to be honest with you, I always thought it was an amateur one, but it's really cool. And it's got the usual suspects of the uh, stereo, um, the stereo out and the mic in. It's got the HDMI port here and it's also got the multi multi port, which is probably where this is going to fit in there. Yeah, that's where it is. Yeah, that fits in there. Let's just close all this up. And uh, just open the big one here. Wow, okay, so who? Wow, check it out. So this one has an Ethernet port. And that is the flash sync. So that's cool. So we have flash sync and we have Ethernet. And uh, that's quite different to the ones which we normally have. Alright, so I'm gonna grab myself a lens, chuck it on this one, and see how it goes. Check that out. Check that out. Pow! Pow! Nice. Okay. So I'm just gonna compare the two of them. Okay, so there's a slight disadvantage here, guys, because I'm using a bracket on this one, because this is how I like to grip it. And this is without a bracket, so all in all, I think it's the same size. Yeah, almost. But this actually feels good in my hand instead of this one. This one's a little flimsy, smaller. So the grip here is much better. I, I feel like it's a solid piece of uh, solid instrument. And this one, yeah, it's still solid because of this. Still love this camera. So I'm gonna switch it on. It's on. Okay, it's telling me there's no card, so let's get a card in. So this one was um, there's one and there's there's one slot number one SD card, there's one and then there's two. So we're gonna put this um, card that way like that. And so this is only like I said, it's a class one card, and have a class two here. So it in chuck in and it close it up. And we're gonna switch the baby on. And um, so I'm asking you to do that usual uh, Usual, uh, the usual thing about uh, formatting the cards. I'm going to find font. Oh, check out the menu! It's a new menu. It's got that really nice A6500 kind of menu. So let's try and find uh, that menu somewhere. Okay, and format. There you go. 
start to and format it and uh, seems to format fast. Okay, formatting is complete and we have basic settings happening there and we're just going to see how this looks. Okay. So it's no memory card in slot one. Okay. Maybe I need to specify which slot I'm going oh yeah, select record maybe in slot 2. Okay, what's going on? Oh man, that is fast. Huh. So like, this is really fast man. Like, it's, it's like, almost like video. So I've put it on to the high speed mode. Uh, I'm just going to go back to normal one single shot mode. Sounds sounds like the normal one. Yeah, let's see what it sounds like. Okay. Slightly uh, slightly more bass in this one. Okay. Also okay, press both of them together. Okay, cross focus. Okay, that's good. Um, so anyway, coming back to the cameras. Okay, wait, wait, okay, I'm cheating because I have a heavier lens on this. I only have 165 uh, millimeter lens, so I can't, uh, I can't compare both of them. But overall, it looks good, uh, feels good. I love the autofocus, and um, I'll put some pictures up soon. Thanks, guys, for watching. Put a thumbs up if you like it. If not, thumbs down. Toodles! Sorry, so I have these two babies here. I forgot the flash. Right, so the flash gun. So one of the things when I look for a flash, I always look for is something that's going to be powerful enough and it's going to be compact enough for me to move around in. So when I when I usually shoot, I'm going to move the A7, A9 out for a second. And when I shoot with the A7, I need this to. This is usually my kit, which is uh, which is strapped in like that. And that's kind of how I shoot usually. This is my 85 uh, 1.8 Zeiss, amazing lens. And uh, when I shoot a wedding, this is what I shoot with. And I need something that's going to be not heavy. So all this time I was using a Nissin flash gun and it was okay. But I want something with some power. And now I got this one. So over the fill it in. So I'm unboxing it now. And we have the actual unit here. And uh, a whole bunch of Manuals, more manuals. Okay, so I think I'm okay with the manuals for the moment. So we'll come back if I need to. Chuck that in there again. So, lots of plastic. Can't reset this stuff. So I love the case, it's like cool. Uh, it doesn't have a bell strap. No bell strap. No way it's sticking out of that. Okay, so no bell strap. Yeah, so it's just purely a, a protective bay, uh, belt strap, a uh, protective case. It's got a little Sony logo on it. Okay, and put something else in there. Oh, it's a stand. Okay, it's got a little bit of a um, little pouch in there, so you guys can see it. A little pouch. And that's why this thing goes in there. Right, so I'm going to move that to the side too. So, it's got a sticker on it. Just take this. Let's pull it out. Right. Um, so pretty basic. It's got an on-off switch. It's got a mode button. It's got a menu. It's got this lock, which happens there all the time. And um, it's got these little sensors. So this is one thing I'm not crazy about with the Sony stuff. It's got little sensors. And if you are a professional or you're a person like me who's a little clumsy. Chances are I'm going to drop this flash once in a way and not going to be able to use it. So I'll be extra careful with this. Um, currently the flash I'm using is uh, like a 8000 rupee flash, which works, but it's not hit, it's not balancing well. And it's got the battery space there. I think I had some batteries out there. Okay, so close it up. Okay, that doesn't feel very good. It feels like it's gonna break. Honestly, it doesn't feel too good. Alright, let's try it out. And we switch it on, it says auto HSS, auto TTL. It's got cool stuff on it. So it's got a TTL. It's a TTL flash gun. But right now I'm just gonna try it on my, on my camera. 
It looks interesting. And it's actually quite balanced. Hey, that's not too bad. That's actually pretty good. It's heavy, but not heavy. Okay. Is there a way I can change this to manual? Okay. It's got lots of cool stuff in it. I mean, it's got the ability to use uh, uh, a radio transmitter kind of thing. Uh, user transmitter, and then you can sync it. And I can use it as a master, I'm assuming. And I have no idea where that is right now, but I will find it. Aha, found it. So we have there. So the menu system is not the best. Um, if you can see this, so it's not the best at the moment. But I'm sure that's probably because I'm used to shooting with Canon lenses uh, and stuff. So let's try and see. Okay, so this is kind of how I use it normally because I want my settings to be manual and uh, I want to be able to do that, move it. So that, that's kind of good, that's kind of good. So at least I'll be able to increase and decrease the power depending on how I want to shoot. Okay, what is auto? Oh, that's zoom. Zoom's auto, okay, that's manual. Um, okay, so it's still good. I mean, it's, it's really fast, so I guess when I'm shooting I can always like click and then move my settings up and down. Um, the, the wheel feels really nice, and uh, yeah, let's try it. Okay. Okay, quite fast. Let's go to like half power. Not bad, so I three flashes and half power. So the, the guide number on this is 45. So if you guys are, if you guys are using your flash guns, if you're using like a um, 5580EX on your Canons, that's a 58 guide number. So this is a, a 45 guide number. Still it doesn't bother me because usually I'm shooting on higher ISO, which means um, I don't need that much of fill-in light. That's how I, oh I love this piece. This is, I love this. Okay, so since I'm shooting on a high guide ISO, it shouldn't be an issue. Obviously it turns uh, all right around, well not right around, but there's a full 360. This is not a switch, I can break it. And, oh, it's got something called multiple set. A new USB port. I will get back to what this does. I have no idea. Right, so it looks good. Uh, I think it also has a LED which you can put on to use. Let's try and find that one. Oh, there yeah. So you have a light. Yay! And you can reduce it and increase it too. So this is ideal for two things. One is, if you're shooting in the dark and you can't get focused, uh, the other thing is also might be really cool if you're using it as like a, a video kind of thing if you want to just do a fill flash, fill light in there. Uh, look, I'll be honest with you, it's not great because there's lots of daylight around this office. Uh, but it seems nice. Okay. Uh, it's got like 10 different settings in it, like intensity. So I guess it should be okay. We'll see how it goes. Right, that's it. Promise. Bye bye. It's on.